just feel like sometimes life is really mental. Dude, that's actually a really good name for a podcast. <laughs> Even when you lose all hope, you go deeper than you've gone. Hold on till you can't no more. I remember just like being so extremely overwhelmed and I just like dissociated from life and I just became super in my head. Hey everyone, welcome back to the Really Mental Podcast where we want you to know no matter who you are, you are not alone. If you are new here, then make sure to follow, like and subscribe on our socials at Really Mental Podcast. And if you enjoyed this conversation with Fozia, then please make sure to rate it a five stars because we really think her journey is worthy of that. Uh, really excited to get into today's conversation and learn more about who Fozia is. Harrison, when it comes to positive thinking, negative thinking, how do you make sure you're speaking nicer to yourself? I think when it comes to those things, I really try and first sit with my emotions and stuff like that as a baseline. So when I'm feeling sad, I'll sit with feeling sad. When I'm feeling happy, I'll sit with feeling happy. I won't get consumed by it, but I think that really helps. Now, when like negative thoughts are coming into my brain constantly, I think it's really important to remind ourselves the reality and actually question those thoughts. And Mm. say you have a thought that goes like, I'm not worthy of this thing going and having a conversation with it and going, why do you think that why do you think you're not worthy of this? And then you actually realize like the basis of these thoughts is actually coming from thin air and doesn't have any evidence towards it. And you're just being really harmful to yourself for no reason. So I think by questioning my thoughts and actually having a conversation with them in a sense, then I'm able to identify what they are like and giving an identity to them. So I know ages ago, we mentioned an alien in your body and kind of like giving them an identity in your thoughts and identity. So just like you would another person, because another person, if they spoke to you the way that you speak to yourself, you wouldn't be surrounding yourself with them. You wouldn't be keeping them in your life. So I think by giving an identity to those thoughts and to those words that someone is saying to you, then you're able to detach yourself from them and really like realize they're not true and they're coming from nothing. What is one of the most powerful exercises or habits you've picked up that has helped your positive thinking routine? Really identifying when those thoughts and being conscious when those thoughts are coming into my brain. I'm still working on it, but by really being present in the moment and seeing those thoughts and realizing how many negative thoughts I'm having in a day, I think that's the baseline of when you start to see an improvement and become more positive. Because if you can't identify it, then you won't even know it's happening. So for me, identifying it and being present was that major turnover for myself. I think one thought I had today when I was being hard on myself, I used to see like negative thoughts and thoughts generally as like a, I'm watching a movie. So I'm in a cinema, I'm in the back row and I'm just watching it all pass. And in doing that, it's a similar thing to what you're saying because you're recognizing the thought and therefore separating yourself from it. And so I've just started doing that again, like I almost separating myself from the thought and then like I almost watch them float past. That's like a trick that I've recently started doing when I've fallen into habits of just being way too hard on myself or getting in a negative thought loop about something that someone said or something that happened, when I'm holding on to something, I just separate it and it tends to help me a lot. So maybe that will help you for the wonderful person listening. Uh, And we definitely know that Fozia is going to have some amazing comments and thoughts on this as well. So we're going to welcome her to the show now. And before we bring her on, if you enjoy this, make sure you send it to a friend. We want to spread this movement and reach as many people as possible and let them know they're not alone with what they're going through. So hopefully it, it resonates with you, and we're going to bring them on now. Welcome, Fauzia. Hey, everyone. We have a really mental show on the Amazon Amp app. We're going to be hosting live conversations with talented humans like you hear on the podcast here. So make sure you go follow us on the Amazon Amp app at Really Mental, and we want you to know that no matter who you are, you're not alone. So hopefully we'll see you on Amazon app at 7 p.m. PT, 10 p.m. ET every Sunday. All right, see you then, beautiful human. Okay, so Fozia, for people who don't know who you are, could you please describe a little bit about yourself? I am a singer, songwriter, um, originally from Morocco, but grew up in Canada. And like, how would you describe yourself in three words? Musical, loving, and passionate. 
I like that. Loving and passionate. Those are two great qualities. <laughs> what would you say like about say those last two? Because I understand the musical side. You're very talented. I can see that. Lots of people Thank can you. see that. We have the loving and compassionate side. How does that sort of play out for you, I guess, day to day in your life? I'm very close to those that I'm close to. Like, I don't have very many friends. Um, I'm very close to my family. And so we're super tight knit. And if someone's in my life, like, it's like, I'm very all in. And I'm very passionate about things that I care about. And so I'm very passionate about those that are around me and I always want the good for them. And I'm always pushing them to, you know, do better and be their best selves. And so I think that everything that I'm just like super in love with, I'm like full on putting my heart into it. What does passion feel like and what does that mean to you? Passion is like a never ending sense of urgency towards something that you love. And so like, you just always wanna give it your all. You always wanna like show that thing or that person that you love them. And I think it all just like boils down to like how much effort you put into something. So passion is just like, it's like all of your emotions just coming out for something or somebody. I know when it comes to music, you were also in school at the same time. How have you sort of found your passion for music and sort of juggled that with like doing other things in life as well that you're, you're into and excited about? It all boils down again to like what I really love. And if I, if I really, really love something, I'm going to make time for it and I'm going to give it my all. And it doesn't feel like work in that case. And so if I'm super in love with like music in school, like I'm going to make it work, even though it might seem crazy or take up all of my time like I will find a way to make it work and just try to reorganize myself and find new ways to balance it. And so, yeah, it's just, it all boiled down to the fact that I loved school and I loved music. And so educating myself, but at the same time, I was able to exercise my creative side. And so, so yeah, it was just about loving it. Did that ever get overwhelming? Absolutely. <laughs> Especially at first, because I was just kind of like, what's going on? Um, like why I started university the first year that I was signed. And so it was literally like a bunch of brand new things all at once. And I was writing music and flying back and forth between um, Canada and Los Angeles to write. And then also I had my exams and like it was all around like a new experience. It was very overwhelming. And um I had to learn how to just like reorganize my life and figure that out. And so I think the second year of university and the second year of being signed were definitely the most fun for me. And I felt like I was like, okay, I got this. And so I just started posting a lot more videos and just having a lot more fun with it. Because of that, I feel like people really connected with it and they're like, oh, like, She's not like this sad person online. Like, <laughs> I think people got to see my personality because the stress was put to the side for a little bit. And I was like, okay, this is this like new life of mine. I understand it and I can have more fun with it. When was the time that you were feeling really overwhelmed? And can you sort of paint the picture of what that looks like? Because I feel like it can be different for everyone. When I was like 18, 19, I didn't cry. Like I didn't, like that's not how I showed like my emotions. And so I would just like shut down completely. And I remember like my first year of university and with music, I remember just like being so extremely overwhelmed and I just like dissociated from life and I just became super in my head. And I was like, I was like, what's going on? Like, I don't know what's happening. And I try to like juggle these emotions, but like all inside and like my family's always like, talk, like, what are you feeling? What are you experiencing? Cause I just go completely silent and I try to figure things out in my head before I give like my best self to those around me. It wasn't an exact moment. I just feel like over time, I slowly just became more and more inside my head and I just felt less and less like myself. What were some of the things you kind of did to get yourself back to being your true self? It still happens to me where I feel like I like get sucked back into my head. And I think I'm learning with each time that this happens, like how to deal with it and how to cope with it. And so I just like start to be more positive. Even if it's like, I don't believe it in the moment, I'll be like, no, you're so good. Like you're doing great. <laughs> Everything's great. And you, I just start to like tell myself these things. And like the first day I won't believe it. The second day I won't believe it. Yeah. But, like over time, I'll just be like feeling better, just like very slowly. And I start to do things that I feel connect me to my, like inner child, like I'll start 
reading mm. again. And I'll start reading just like teen fiction novels. And then I'll just start writing music on my piano again. Things that I would do as a kid that would make me so happy, I start doing them again. And I feel like I slowly turn back into like my old happier self. <laughs> it's interesting what you were saying about at the start, not believing it, because I feel like that was my experience with like positive thinking. I feel like I would sort of say stuff like, um, you know, I'm confident, I'm this, I'm that. And I didn't believe it at all. But like, yeah. as you were saying, after say like even a day, like that's a day is almost enough to like start believing it more. What we tell ourselves can be so powerful and literally change the way we see things around us. Mm -hmm. When it comes to speaking about what you're going through versus being in your head, is that something you feel like you have a better grip of or is it just like always um, keeping that in check and making sure you're not getting too in your head? It's kind of a bit of both. Like I feel like now I'm a lot more vocal about what I feel. And so I'll just be like, okay, I feel, you know, very stressed or I feel just not myself. So I can't do this right now. Or like, I'll get to this in a, in a day. Cause like, normally it's like a quick turnaround, but like whenever I don't acknowledge those feelings, that's when I can like get deeper and deeper into that negative state. And so I just try to be aware of it, like when it happens. And I honestly feel like just in the past few months, like it wasn't even a long time ago, I started to understand myself better. You're not mean or rude to anybody else, but like to yourself, you're just like nasty. And I feel all of these things and it's literally all in my head. Like it's, I just tell myself these things like, you're never going to succeed. Yeah. You're not good enough. You suck. Mm. You're so lame. Like I literally tell myself all these things and then I'm believing it, but I'm like, why? Why am I telling myself this? Like nobody even said that to you. Like there's, you're surrounded by so many loving people. Like, why are you creating this negative space to live in? And so now I keep that in check and I'm like, no more, no more of that. And like, it still trickles its way back, but I feel like I'm like learning how to push it away. Yeah, I think everyone kind of has those negative thoughts. It's just how you manage it and how you deal with it. That's the best form of kind of like suppressing them. They're not abnormal, but it's how we deal with them. That's the most important thing. For those that are like listening, that are having those thoughts that you were having at that time, what advice would you give them? See where it's coming from. Like, is it someone in your life that may be, you know, feeding you these like negative thoughts about yourself or is it coming from you? Why is it coming from you? Like, is there an insecurity in your life that you think you can work on? I feel like just find the root of it and then just embrace it and be like, either I'm going to work on this or this is who I am because either way, like, I just think acceptance and gratitude, it's like the first key. It's like once you accept something in that moment, you just start to just let go. 100%. I think that's really good advice. I just like wish that more people of any age yet also just our age as well would speak about these things because like, I feel like nobody gives us like a rule book for like navigating some of those toxic feelings that like, or thoughts that we have. Have you got any like things that you turn to and do when say everything flares up and maybe you just have too many negative thoughts to sort of manage? What I'll do is I'll either just like sit in it. I feel like if I just sit in those feelings, I allow them to just be there and like do their thing and then they, they go away faster. I just give it a moment and then I'm like, okay, you, you lived through it, you felt what you had to feel, and then I move on and I try to just play music, write music, hang out with my family, play video games with my family, hang out with my friends, like things that just bring me peace and I try to move away from it. But I give it a moment to just like sit there and experience it because I feel like if you push it away too much, then it just sits there lingering in the back of your mind. I think my only question is when you sit in it, how do you stop yourself from getting consumed by it. I give it like a time. I'm like, okay, so tonight it's just going to be my night of just chilling and not being like super happy, go lucky. Like it's okay. And I don't know what tomorrow is bringing, but like I tell myself, I'm like, tomorrow you're going to wake up and it's going to be the best day. Like you're going to be so productive. You're going to write your favorite song. Like I tell myself these things before I go to bed. And I think like that just manifests itself into, into my life. Just for an example, I'll be like, 
a song didn't do as well as everyone expected. I'm like, but do you really care? I'm like, you like making music and like sharing it with people that you love and your fans. I'm like, who cares if it doesn't do as well as somebody around you that you work with might want it to do? I'm like, do you care? I ask myself, do I care? No, I don't. Okay, well then why do you think you suck? Like, move on. I was gonna ask if you guys had any coping mechanisms like what mm. what do you guys do whenever you find yourselves in those situations or are you still figuring it out i've been learning a lot more to just sit in it like you were saying and almost i think of it as like letting it like wash over and i think part of that has been letting go of this like toxic i guess perspective that i have to be happy or positive all the time and so that's been like a whole thing to unpack in itself but i guess with that i've learned to like one sit with it to like talk about it more because I've learned to just let go of, you know, again, that um, belief that I should be happy all the time. I also just like pray and that gives me a lot of peace too. I think those three things like probably, you know, techniques that I have yet. I also acknowledge the fact that I'm, because I'm not perfect, like it doesn't always, you know, like work all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, Harrison? Mine are very interesting. So I'm yet to find that place of like super, super, being super, super consistent with something. I think that's the hardest part is like not getting sucked into the emotion when you're feeling it. Cause that's something that I can tend to do. If I like sit and feel it for too long, I can get consumed by it in a sense. And then it becomes harder to get out. Mm -hmm. I think what helps and what I'm trying to build over time. And I know a lot of people say it is like building more of a routine and yeah. getting up and going to sleep and like having kind of some set boundaries so I can feel that sense of security and safety. It's very simple, but it gives you that sense of, you know, what you're going to be doing at the start of every morning. And that kind of gives you a sense yeah. of safety, at least for myself. I think the big thing for me as well is I love to talk to the people I'm close with. I'm very vocal about how I'm feeling and I um, reach out to the people who I'm very close to and whether it's venting or having a deep conversation with them that really I find helps me navigate my emotions as well. How does sort of managing those emotions growing up as you know any human does whilst also having this platform and I guess expectation that comes with it to you know put in lots of work all the time how how does that sort of influence your mental health and play on your mind? I've realized over time that I like come and go in waves and I kind of have like this like inside joke with like my family or even people that I work with. Like I was talking to my a &R months ago and I was like, I was literally telling him, I'm like, you know, I haven't really been feeling like myself. Like that's why I've been very like quiet. I kind of related it back to a time years ago where the same thing happened to me. And I was like, once I find my footing again and I pick myself back up, then I start to go uphill. And then every time I would like see him, I'm like, we're a little bit higher. Like, <laughs> we're, made, we're made a little bit higher. And he was like, yeah, I love that. And so it was just kind of like a funny thing between us where I'm like a little bit higher on the hill and making it like one step higher on that hill with those around me and those that I work with. And it just made it less, a little less serious, you know? Okay, this is gonna sound kind of weird, but like I classify like these these periods of my life whenever I'm feeling down and very up as like new chapters in my life. And I start to associate like, I was feeling down last time before this major change in your life happened, before you- It's like the end of the chapter. It's like the end and the before the beginning of yeah. something really good that's about yeah. to happen. And so I just tell myself, I'm like, last time you felt this way, you had no idea what was coming. Like you had no idea you were gonna write this song. You had no idea that you were gonna have this collaboration, this performance, like all of this stuff. And so I tell myself like, you have no idea what's coming and that's why you feel this way. You're becoming stronger for this next chapter. I'm sure I'm gonna go through many of these periods in my life, but that's what's really helped me. Wow, that's amazing. I'm gonna take that away from today as well to practice. Another thing that like keeps me very hopeful is that I'm like, you feel so down right now like you're being thrown all of these challenges that you're going to feel so amazing when the good comes. Like you are going to just appreciate it so much more because you're going through these like this difficult time. And so that's that's something that always helps me too. I'm like, you're going to feel happiness like purely extractive. <laughs>
<laughs> because you feel this way right now. And that's something that also keeps me very hopeful. The mountain is the same size as the mountain you went up before, but mm. because you're prepared for it, you know how to yes. like overcome that faster. And sometimes the mountain's bigger, so it takes more time. But then whenever you get a little mountain, it's like, because <laughs> <laughs> you're just, you're used to it. <laughs> yeah. What would you say like some tips that you'd have for people that really want to try and find their, their tribe? find their family i'd say to join something random like i think that's how you make friends it's like that's why you make friends in university because you just meet them through classes and you're kind of grouped together in ways that you wouldn't normally ever meet these people and so i think you just have to go with the flow it's not that serious until it is like your best friend's not like your best friend right away um just hang out with someone, trust your intuition. If you feel like it's not the right person to have close to you in your life, then no harm, no foul. Maybe it's just like a, a coffee person that you go for coffee randomly, or maybe they're just not your friend. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> it's, it's not that serious, you know? <laughs> true, true. We do a little segment where it's like, Five quick questions. It's usually like the first thing that comes to your mind. First question is, what makes you overthink? My career. What is something that you find the hardest to admit? Sometimes it's hard for me to admit like good things about me, about myself. I like to just think I'm all negative all the time. And then I'm like, why? So like if someone's like, you're good at this. I'm like, no. But I'm like, why? Why can't I just say yeah? <laughs> so, Yeah. <laughs> When was the last time you felt really grateful? I was driving and there was this really old sweet man that was just like, sorry, it's going to get really serious. But there's this really old sweet man that was like on the side of the street for like money, but like at the stoplight. And I never like carry money with me, but my mom had like money in her purse. And so she's like, oh, I have money in my purse. I'm like, perfect. So I like hand it to him. And he was just so grateful. It literally like made me cry. And he was just like, you are so beautiful. Like, thank you so much. Like, bless you. And I'm like, I don't know, it just like hit me really hard. And I just felt very grateful for my life. And I wanted to just help more people in that moment. I was like, oh my God, that was such a pure interaction. Exchange. So yeah. I felt just very grateful in that moment. What is the most formative experience you've ever had? I would say this past year. I know it's not like one specific experience, but like I feel like I went through like a whole mental change. But like 2022 was the most <laughs> formative <laughs> so far. Final question, coming back to it. What is something you wish people would tell you more often? I think like this is kind of weird but I honestly like when people give me like people around me give me constructive criticism like I actually don't mind that I actually really appreciate it because I know they they're looking out for me like if it's coming from a good place I want to ask like a, a couple last questions the one thing that came you know from that fast mental health cue time is you know what makes you overthink and you said your career what about your career makes you overthink, do you feel? It's very up and down for me. I think like, again, like I create this like false narrative in my head that everything around me is just falling down. And like the last good thing that happened will be the last good thing that happened. Like I just convince myself of that. And so that's why I overthink about it a lot. I'm like, am I meant for this? Like, am I good enough? That's probably the thing I think about the most ever. Like I will every day overthink my career. <laughs> and it just boils down back to like, I love this and I love the people around me. So that shouldn't, that should be the only thing that matters. I'm a perfectionist to a fault. And so yeah. if one little thing goes wrong, I'm like, the world is ending and like everything's bad. And so that's just, inside of me and i need to work on that because i just want to deliver like perfection all the time i'm like yeah. oh, make sure the music is perfect yeah. like everything is like perfect and so if it's just a little bit off i like it really hits me it's tough isn't it perfectionism 
have you been able to deal with that and kind of submit things that aren't necessarily perfect? Not with my music, because I, <laughs> if I have a say in it, I will make sure that it's perfect. Yeah. Um, but like, just for example, like live shows, like if a note was slightly different from what I wanted or yeah. something, it took me, I'm still working on that, but I think like it took this tour, like the one I did in Europe, to help me overcome that fear um, and to just let go. Because the thing is, whenever I'm stressed and I'm, I'm anxious, during a show or before a show, I will give my worst performance. Whenever I'm like chilling and I feel good and I'm enjoying the moment, I'll do things that I didn't even know I was capable of doing. Okay. And so that's that's the difference. It's it's like a you have to just really like I have to let it go and like let go of that perfectionism and things that are better than I expected will come. And so 100% still working on it, but getting better. Well, I'm glad that it's getting better with time. I, I know how frustrating that can be. It's such an annoying thing because it takes away from like enjoying it, I feel like for me. But when it comes to the future, what does a great 12 months look like for you? I think a great 12 months looks like me releasing an album and having singles leading up to it with visuals and creating like this whole universe in my music and um, having a few, like having time off to spend with my family and enjoy, enjoy life with. And if time allows, like a tour surrounding that body of music. It's like a good balance of everything. And for your mental health, like what are you currently working on and wanting to work on for the future? Just practicing a lot of like self-awareness of where these thoughts are coming from trying to pick them apart that way and be like you feel this way because of this can you help can you fix this or is it out of your control if it's out of your control why are you like worrying about it you can't do anything about it and if you can fix it let's start fixing it and so just being more aware of these thoughts and not just thinking that they're real like they're true because i think that's where a lot of my problems come from i start to just believe the negativity I put in my own mind. I love the worlds you put together for your music. And I think it makes Thank everything you. you do very unique. And I also think just like hearing you talk today, like I think that you have like a lot of knowledge and are very wise. Thank you. So hold on to that because it's it's very precious. So <laughs> Thank you so much. Likewise, it was so lovely talking to both of you. I think what you're doing is so amazing and it's so important and it's it's just so great that you're spreading awareness for this because like you said, I don't think it's talked about enough. So thank you for, for what you do and thank you for having me on. So Will, I really loved that episode with Fozia and how she spoke about how she deals with negative thoughts and her whole process as to filtering out those thoughts. I wanted to ask you, what was your biggest takeaway? Yeah, I thought it was a really interesting episode, particularly when she was talking about, you know, going up each mountain and each battle challenge that we face as humans. Like, as we were saying in the podcast, there's two paths you can go with it. It can either swallow you up on the journey, on the hike up the mountain, or you can push through and make it to the top. And each time it is sort of like you're you're better equipped for the situation. You have more tools in your arsenal to know how to uh, work through whatever challenge you're facing. I really like how she spoke about that. And uh, I just think an interesting thing for me was that, you know, hearing Fozia be vulnerable and open around the subject of, you know, questioning her career at times and whether she's a good singer, stuff like that. Because to me, she's an amazing artist, amazing singer. And I think from an outsider, it would be easy to say, okay, like, she's got so much going for her and she's got such a long road ahead of her. As you can see though, from the artists we speak to, the creators we have on, it doesn't always feel like that for them, even though we're looking at them and you know potentially putting them on, on pedestals. Just remember that everyone has their own sort of struggles they're going through. And I think another big takeaway for me was just reminding myself that, you know, you never know what someone's going through. So asking these types of questions can really help us understand people better that we may think we already know. So I really enjoyed that episode. I think 
there's you know many more conversations we can have around negative thinking. And if you want to hear those, make sure you let us know and tell us on our socials at Really Mental Podcast. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to subscribe and rate it five stars. That is actually the last episode for season one. So we will be back with season two. We'll see you in 2023. Until then though, make sure you continue to check in with yourself, look after your mental health. If there's any guests you want us to have in season two, make sure you let us know. Harrison, anything you want to say to wrap us up for season one of Really Mental? Just stay safe, everybody. Have an amazing holiday and spend time with your family and friends. Check in with your friends, ask them if they're okay and share this to a friend if you want. Maybe they might need to hear some of the things Fozia said today or any of our episodes throughout season one. So let us know, DM us, let us know who you want to have on for season two and we'll be back soon. Yeah. And remember that this isn't it for the rest of the year. We're still doing shows on the platform AMP with guests and musicians, creators like Fozia every Sunday at 7 p.m. PT and 10 p.m. ET. So if you want to hear more conversations, make sure to go to our socials. Watch out for that post each Sunday because we're going to be going live. All right, beautiful people. See you soon. See you later. Even when you lose all hope, you go deeper than you've gone. Hold on till you can't no more. I just want to end this episode today, Will, by like talking directly to the audience saying like, if you guys are struggling, Will and I aren't like professionals in this field. We're just telling our experiences through stories and kind of just sharing what we've been through. But if you are really struggling, we do highly suggest going to see a therapist and professional help because they will be the ones that can really help you in your situation. Of course, feel free to share your stories with us and DM us. Um, We want to know what you're going through, but make sure you take the time to speak to a professional because that's going to give you the most help. That said, we hope that these stories and the people we've spoken to can really help you on your journey to to finding that right person, whether it's a therapist or that friend to talk to about it. Make sure you take the time to do that.